Hello, everyone, and welcome to the presentation. My name is Nick Mehta, Technical Service Engineer with Microdyne Nadir, and I'm going to be talking to you today about the membrane solutions that Microdyne Nadir offers for difficult to treat feedwaters. And with that, let's jump right in. I'd like to start with a brief background on Microdyne Nadir itself. Microdyne Nadir is part of the Man Hummel Group, a global market leader in many different types of filtration uh, with a rev revenue of about $4 billion. Microdyne Nadir is part of the Life Sciences and Environment Group within Man and Hummel with manufacturing locations across the US, Europe, and Asia. And Microdyne focuses on the membrane solutions for liquid filtration. As you can see here, Microdyne Deer offers a wide range of different membrane designs from microfiltration all the way down to reverse osmosis, uh, from spiral wound elements to hollow fiber modules and MBR modules. And uh, any one of our representatives would be happy to review your specific application with you and determine the, the best solution uh, for your application. Now, what sets my grenadier apart from other manufacturers is our ability to make custom designs to specification, including private label designs. Microanadir also offers a range of unique membrane products, uh, some of which I'll be going into detail on later in the presentation because of how they make it possible to treat uh, difficult feed waters. So what I'd like to do here is go through a few water treatment problems that we commonly see and then briefly explain the membrane solutions that are available for these types of situations. So the, the, the first problem we're going to look at is high fouling RO feed waters. Now, uh, con conventionally, RO membranes are limited by fairly strict feed water quality requirements, uh, such as having an SDI less than 5, uh, turbidity under 1 NTU, and having negligible organic material in the feed stream. Uh, in most standard RO elements, uh, when, when there's a case when this is not met, uh, membrane fouling can occur uh, where you know particulates are from the feed stream are deposited on the membrane surface which then blocks the feed from contacting the permeate and, or contacting the membrane and, and permeating through the membrane pores this type of fouling is is detrimental to the membrane's performance because it'll cause a reduction in total permeate flow from the system which then, of course, means that the system is going to need to be cleaned more frequently and, you know, it's associated with higher chemical costs and you know, longer system downtimes. Um, and then, of course, if you're, you know, unable to, to adequately clean to restore the permeate flow, you're also looking at shortened membrane life and, you know, therefore more frequent element replacements. So Microdynadir offers the Tricep X20 low fouling RO membrane for situations where the RO feed has high fouling tendencies. Uh, the membrane chemistry itself is different from standard polyamide membrane chemistry, uh, giving the membrane surface a, a more neutral surface charge throughout its operating pH ranges, uh, which makes fouling significantly less likely to adhere to the membrane surface compared to the negatively charged surface of a standard polyamid RO membrane surface. Uh, the membrane exhibits high salt rejection in combination with its increased organic uh, fouling resistance. And, uh, you know, through using this type of membrane as opposed to a, a standard element, you know, can, can lead to a lower frequency of cleanings and extended membrane life. Now, most membrane manufacturers also market low fouling RO membranes, but uh, there's a significant difference between the X20 membrane and, and most uh, competitive low fouling RO membranes. 
most competitive low fouling RO membranes are made of a, a standard polyamide polymer that's been surface treated or has a secondary coating. And it's, it's generally this secondary coating that gives the membranes their low fouling properties. And in these cases, there's minimal bonding between the polyamide polymer and the chemical coating, uh, meaning that these coatings can be removed by you know, any frequent and aggressive membrane cleanings, especially in these kinds of high fouling applications. The X20 membrane instead obtains its permanent low fouling characteristics from its fully cross-linked copolymer backbone composition, and that cannot be you know, removed or cleaned away. So the, the X20 membrane will maintain its low fouling properties throughout its lifetime. So here we'll just look briefly at some case studies of systems where X20 elements have been used successfully. Um, the first one we'll look at is a cogeneration plant with a 300 GPM RO system where they were having difficulties with fouling. Uh, they were having to clean every two to three days due to high delta P's across the element vessels and low permeate flows compared to you know, what the system was spec'd for. Uh, the plant ended up replacing uh, their current elements with X20 elements at the time, and they were able to reduce the cleaning frequency down to once every two weeks. And it was a considerable cost savings for them. Uh, the plant also noted that they had increased silica rejection with the X20 elements compared to uh, the previous elements that they had in place. Now, the next application we'll look at, it was a, a power station in Africa with a 2.9 MGD RO system. Their feed water is a blend of uh, mine water mixed with cooling water blowdown, which was giving them some difficulties because the feed water had a high SDI as well as organic material and some residual oils. And in this case, installing the X20 elements allowed them to reduce the RO cleaning frequency from every three days to five weeks, which was another huge uh, cost savings for them. The last case we hear that we'll look at is a municipal water treatment plant in Spain that had a 5.2 MGD RO system. Um, in this case, the RO system is being used to bring the TDS levels down to appropriate levels to reuse the water for irrigation. And the X20 elements in that system lasted 11 years uh, before requiring replacement for the first time. So they were very excited about that. So the next problem we're going to look at is uh, cases where the feed stream to the membrane system is at a high temperature. Um, there's plenty of applications where this is relevant, um, some being in laundry wastewater, uh, boiler blowdown, or uh, produced water applications. Uh, in these types of applications, the cost associated with cooling the streams down specifically for a membrane filtration step is just not feasible, or in some cases, you know, when, when high temperature operation is desired, it may be because uh, there would be an undesirable chemical change within the, the feed stream if, if it's allowed to cool past a certain temperature. Um, you know, standard spiral wound elements are typically limited to a 45 degree C maximum continuous operating temperature. And operating above that temperature will cause the materials within the elements to deform. And so it's uh, not a good choice for these types of situations. So Microdyne Deer offers the TurboClean HT or high temperature line of spiral wound membrane elements. And these are designed to operate continuously up to 80 degrees C. Uh, the elements are made using a TurboClean patented hard shell uh, for its durability. And it also uses you know, more robust polymers and glue that can withstand uh, high temperatures up to 80 C without any loss of integrity. Um, this makes these elements perfect for these kinds of situations where, you know, cooling the feed stream isn't feasible. And TurboClean HT elements are available with, you know, a wide range of our membranes from microfiltration, you know, ultrafiltration 
nanofiltration and RO flat sheet membranes can all be rolled into these TurboClean HT models. Um, and they can be used in both water and process applications for high temperature operation. So the next problem we'll look at is cases where they're, you know, where a system may have limits on the, the amount of chemical sanitizers they can use. And, you know, of course, chlorine is, is one of the most effective chemical sanitizers and oxidizers for removing biological activity. But in certain applications and in certain facilities, there may be, you know, chlorine use restrictions, whether it's due to local regulatory or health and safety requirements. Or, of course, in the case of polyamide RO and NF membranes, you know, no chlorine can be used due to the limits of the membrane chemistry itself. Uh, an, an example of this is in uh, when you know chlorine is typically used as a, a membrane cleaner for dairy, UF, and MF systems in the U.S., uh, but not for similar similar systems in Europe. Um, in cases where chlorine use is restricted, uh, but but you know biological growth still needs to be addressed. Um, in, in those cases, we would use something like a TurboClean heat sanitizable element. Uh, heat sanitizable elements can be sanitized up to 85 degrees Celsius, and it effectively, effectively eliminates biogrowth and does not require the use of oxidizing chemicals like chlorine. Uh, the design of the TurboClean hard shell also minimizes bypass around the outside of the membrane element, which forces more flow through the membrane element compared to net wrapped element designs. And this is important during the cleaning and sanitizing steps as well, because more of the cleaning solution is forced through the membrane element and contacts the membrane surface, leading to a more effective cleaning overall. So the next problem we'll look at is treating high TDS feed waters. So standard brackish water RO membranes are typically used for salinities up to about 10,000 ppm and are generally rated for operation up to 600 psi. Standard seawater RO elements can be used for salinities up to about 50,000 ppm TDS and are rated for operation up to about 1,000 to 1,200 psi. And the main reason that higher pressure is required at higher feed TDS is that the high TDS in the feed stream means that there's more osmotic pressure to overcome to push water through the membrane and separate it from you know, the high concentra concentration salt solution on the feed side of the membrane. Now, of course, in you know, applications such as minimal liquid discharge or zero liquid discharge, where the goal is to recover very high percentages of the feed, it's very important to perform as much of the concentration as possible in the membrane system to save costs on the more expensive downstream treatment like evaporators and crystallizers. So if you need to recover extremely high percentages on the membrane side, that means you're going to need to operate at very high pressures you know, higher pressures than maybe your or your brackish water or even seawater standard elements can handle. And so for cases like that, we would use the TRICEP HPR, which stands for high pressure, or the TRICEP UPR, ultra high pressure RO elements, RO or NF elements. <clears throat> so the TRICEP HPR and UPR line can be used for industrial and seawater applications where high, pre high pressure operation is required to overcome those high osmotic pressures. Uh, for MLD and ZLD systems, this means that you know, TDS concentrations of 100,000 ppm or greater can be reached, uh, which is going to mean a higher recovery from the membrane system and less expense on the evaporative cool evaporation and crystallizers downstream. And these membranes are not just available with RO membranes, they're also available using uh, the, any of our nanofiltration uh, membranes as well for any situations where separation of hardness ions from high TDS brine solutions is required. 
Um, the tricep HPR and UPR series of elements consists of a durable fiberglass outer wrap and again robust polymers and glues that can handle operation at these high pressures without any losses in integrity. So the last thing we'll, that we'll look at here is uh, cases where it's preferred to maintain a chlorine residual in the feed stream to an RO or NF system. Now, obviously, standard polyamide RO and NF membranes can't have any chlorine in the feed stream to prevent oxidation damage to the membranes. And this is always very you know, clearly stated on the technical data sheets for these membrane types. Uh, but there are certain applications where a small chlorine residual in the feed stream is preferred, whether it's for sanitary reasons, such as in beverage water production, or to mitigate the fouling effects of biological growth, such as in uh, surface water treatment with uh, where N uh, NOM or, or natural organic matter removal is, is the goal. In these type of applications, uh, basically what you need is a, a, to a chlorine tolerant membrane. And so for these cases, Microdynadir offers the TurboClean Bev CA, or in general, our cellulose acetate uh, membrane elements. Of course, unlike polyamide membranes, cellulose acetate membranes can handle a continuous chlorine residual in the feed stream, uh, up to 1 ppm continuous, or up to 30 ppm for short-term cleanings. Microdynadir is one of the only commercial manufacturers of CA membranes in the world, and we have made recent investments in CA membrane production equipment to ensure that we can continue to offer these membranes in the future. Cellulose acetate membranes are available in fiberglass wrapped element designs for industrial or municipal applications, and they're also available in uh, sanitary designs such as the TurboClean Bev CA series. Uh, for beverage applications. And these, you know, obviously use our TurboClean hard shell for incre increased durability and minimum minimized bypass flow, kind of like I explained earlier. So just as a summary here, we offer a complete product range of over 40 different flat sheet membranes, including microfiltration, UF, NF, and RO. Uh, these membranes are available as flat sheets and can also be used in spiral wound element designs. We've discussed some of the different product designs here today, including TurboClean hard shell sanitary elements um, and our elements for high pressure and high temperature operation. And of course, in addition, we also offer, besides spiral wound elements, we offer the BioCell MBR module, and various hollow fiber and capillary and tubular ultrafiltration and microfiltration modules. So just before I let you guys go, I just want to leave you with a brief reminder of who Microdynadir is and the brands that we offer. As I mentioned on a previous slide, Microdynadir is owned by the larger Mann & Hummel group, and Microdynadir focuses on membrane solutions for liquid filtration Though some through some re recent acquisitions, Microdynadir now offers a few different brands. Uh, the Microdyne brand of water and wastewater products consists of products such as our Microdyne RO and NF line of spiral wound elements, and also the Microdyne BioCell MBR module. We offer the Tricep brand for process and specialty spiral wound elements, including TurboClean elements with a, a, a sanitary hard shell. And we, lastly, we offer the Ultramare brand for small commercial type elements and private labeling. So we've, we've got you covered whether you need an off the shelf type replacement or for an existing membrane system or a new custom design uh, for a specialty application. Thank you everyone for your time and please reach out to your Microdynadir representative for any questions you may have about this presentation or any of our products. Thanks again.